Hi everyone, welcome back. And a nod and tip of the hat to all my fellow veterans out there. It's probably a big week. I know a lot of celebrations. I've been involved in a couple here this week with the Stearman. It was a lot of fun at Delta and at Peach State. And I you know we've got a few more coming up with Veterans Day actually being next Saturday. So uh, enjoy. Anyway, a couple of topics I wanted to go over today. Uh, one has to do with intake gaskets and intake hoses. So I know I've written about this lots of times. And uh, there's been some columns in Sport Aviation. I think I've made some videos in the past. But I still see uh, what I would call problems coming up out there. And I think many of you forget about the intake gaskets and the problems they can cause. The most recent one I'll share with you, and I'm going to write this up in more detail for one of the diagnosis columns in kit planes. But uh, bottom line is it's a scenario that's not unlike many of you could be having out there. It was an airplane that sat for about eight to 10 months while it underwent a panel upgrade. And it didn't click with the customer, except what uh, the person did notice is an RV-10, that all of a sudden after the panel upgrade, cylinder head temps on climb out were horrendously hotter. And I say horrendously because they were approaching 460 degrees or more on climb out to just a couple of thousand feet in normal fall temperatures in the Atlanta area. So nothing really hot on the OATs, but the CHTs really going through the roof. When you look at the data, everything looked kind of normal. But, uh, you know, I, uh, the airplane came to the shop and the first thing went through my mind is it's running really lean. <laughs> Something's changed. Now, one of the things that can cause that an upgrade, it was a Garmin upgrade, and there's a configuration setting in the G3X for type J or type K thermocouples. And the first thing I did was go to that because the customer mentioned it was after the panel upgrade. Unfortunately or fortunately, it was configured properly, and so that wasn't the problem. So immediately I took a look at the intake gaskets, and we're going to show you a still picture here I took of them. They were just really horrible. And not only were the intake gaskets at the top all dried out and bad, this was a cold air induction system on a lycoming. So you've got your intake tubes that go down to a plenum that's actually outside uh, the oil sump. And those are in there with O-rings. I think it's, uh, I forget the number, 277 or something. But anyway, they're red O-rings that go in there. A couple of them look like they actually maybe had never been installed properly. They were kind of just kind of curved. You'll see it in the picture. But the bottom line is the upper intake gaskets were all dried out, broken. It looked like one maybe had been replaced in the past because it was of a different color than all the other five. And then the O-rings were just full of oil, blue stained, etc. So we replaced all of those and the cylinder head tips all came back down to normal. Actually took pictures on climb out every thousand feet to 5,500 feet. And we're lucky if we, if we hit uh, 400 degrees on that climb out. So that's all fixed. That was pretty exciting. So again, I'll share more details and pictures and we'll show you some still pictures in the video here. Second topic is somebody actually made a comment on, I think one of our YouTube video pages or maybe it was the Kit Planes page. Hey, we see a lot of your unairworthy and you show us what's wrong. Can you show us the right way to do it? And, you know, I think that's a really great idea. And I don't know why I didn't think about that. So we're going to start this time. I think it all kind of had to do with engine controls because I <clears> had <throat> made some comment about they were just attached improperly. So you're going to see a picture or two here on engine controls on how they should be properly attached. The important thing to remember is, <coughs> excuse me, is that the engine control should not be attached to either the firewall, the airframe, the engine mount, et cetera, as the last point of contact. If you do that, what happens, your engine is shaking in the mount, both startup, shutdown, and a little bit in flight there. So you're going to have that connection to whether it's the carburetor, the fuel servo, or the prop governor, kind of going back and forth all the time if you do that. The last contact point should be a hard point on the engine. So you're going to either have a bracket or some bolts into the engine itself, and then use the proper clamp for the particular engine control you have. Some engine controls at the end will actually use a clamp on them. It usually takes two bolts. By the way, in the engine compartment, I would, uh, especially uh, and most of these controls are underneath the engine. Make certain you're using heat nuts and not just the fiber nuts firewall forward. Uh, fiber nuts are good for about 250 degrees, and your firewall forward compartment can be a little hotter than that. So use the proper nuts, so you'll have a clamp nut on some engine controls, and then some engine controls actually have nuts on both sides. 
So you want to use a big lock washer on each side and tighten it up through the hole. And then you'll see in the pictures I'm, uh, you're going to see here, I usually put some, uh, you know, the uh, marking paint, uh, cross check or whatever it's called now. And so you can do on a pre-flight or you have the cowling off, you can make certain nothing's moved there. Okay. So again, make certain the engine controls are attached to the engine at the last contact point. All right. And as we go through some of these videos, I'll go look up some of the other unairworthy items that I've posted and we'll show you the right ways to do things. Okay. Have fun. So one more thing I'll show you in the video down here is where you're going to route engine controls. You want to make certain they're not clamped hard. Like right here, we've got these attached to an engine mount tube just to give them some guidance on routing. But we know there's some movement between the engine shaking and where it's mounted here to the uh, engine mount tube. So don't clamp them down tight there. Allow for some flexible movement. But you'll see up in here, this is where it should be hard mounted to the engine. You can see this bracket. You can see the back side of the mount. And then we'll look down here. Let's see if I can get you a picture and you can see how these are mounted. Right there's a very good picture of a control that has a clamp mount. You can see there's a little ridge in that clamp that goes into the ridge in the engine control. And then the other one right next to it is uh, one that uses a nut on each side. So you just clamp that down and you can see on both of those where I've put cross check. Hopefully that answers some questions on engine controls. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.